China's Communist Party celebrates 100 years with pomp, power and a warning to the West. Beijing will stand up to bullies. A landmark human rights treaty is missing a key member, Turkey, will tell you why some fear millions of women and girls could now face a greater risk of violence. And William and Harry's Royal Rift is being pushed aside for a very special appearance. We will tell you how they're honouring their mother, Diana, today. It is 10 a.m. here in Atlanta, 6 p.m. in Abu Dhabi. I'm Linda Kincaid, sitting in for Becky Anderson. Hello and welcome to Connect the World. We begin with an hour of celebration and a warning. As China marks 100 years of its Communist Party, its defiant president says he can transform the Great Wall of China into what he calls a Great Wall of Steel. Take a listen. At the same time, the Chinese people will never allow ourselves to be bullied, oppressed or enslaved by any foreign powers. Anyone who dares to try will find their heads bashed bloody against a great wall of steel forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. With China, a country that once struggled with poverty, is now looking like the next superpower. Before the lavish spectacle on display just a few hours ago, Beijing has a major challenge on its hands. It's facing a world increasingly united against it. Democratic governments have made it clear they're not happy with Beijing's actions in Hong Kong. President Xi's big speech won't offer them any reassurance. After all, he's pledging to build up China's military. And he's also keen on what he calls a reunification of democratic Taiwan with the mainland. We have our team coverage around the region for you. CNN's David Culver is in Shanghai, where the Chinese Communist Party was born. Ivan Watson is reporting for us from Hong Kong, and I Will Ripley is in Taipei. Good to have you all with us. I want to start with you first, David. Uh, so we see this celebration, a huge show of strength and a very aggressive, defiant message from the Chinese leader. Uh, certainly talk to us about the language and the tone, because this really was Xi Jinping issuing a threat, a warning to foreign nations that uh, you take on us and you will feel the wrath of our nation. And an important word you use there, Linda, show. This was a performance. It was highly choreographed, practiced for weeks so that it was done just right. Security incredibly tight around Beijing and other parts of China as they now are moving forward with 12 months of celebration here. And you're right, the words are strong. We should point out the piece of sound that you played there. You heard that soundbite from President Xi Jinping. In English, the translation comes a bit tougher than it is in Chinese. Nonetheless, it's a serious message. And as you point out, a warning to the rest of the world, particularly to the U.S. It's clear that while not mentioned specifically, that's where it's directed. And one that suggests that the rest of the world should not try to contain China, that China is on a trajectory that cannot be stopped. And President Xi spoke for about an hour. He obviously focused heavily on the successes of the Chinese Communist Party over the past 100 years. And as you pointed out, it started here. A few dozen members at the time in 1921, now some 95 million members. One thing, though, they leave out, and this is quite common, are the failures, the catastrophes, the setbacks, including the 1989 crackdown at Tiananmen Square, where today's celebration was held in Beijing, a bloody one at that, and the Cultural Revolution. Those things omitted from the official narrative, and yet at the same time, there are undeniable successes. A fast modernizing military, an economy that is now soared to be the second largest in the world. The trajectory is impressive and it's one that they sustain because of the economy in part but also because of the willpower and determination that they seem to put forward once again today linda it, it is a performance nonetheless but also one that's been backed by action absolutely david culver if you can stand by for us there i want to go to ivan watson in hong kong for reaction there because as we see this celebration in mainland China, uh, we are seeing this consistent crackdown on uh, the democracy movement in Hong Kong, on free press. What's been the reaction there to uh, Xi Jinping's speech? 
Well, here in Hong Kong, this is arguably a, a triple anniversary, 100 years of the Communist Party, 24 years since the handover of Hong Kong from uh, British to Chinese rule, and a little bit over a year since Beijing imposed, kind of blitzed this controversial national security law on the former British colony, uh, which has been used now to arrest more than 100 people, mostly from the political opposition and from uh, pro-democracy activists, uh, as well as the leadership of one of the most popular uh, opposition newspapers, which was forced to shut down just last week. Now, the authorities here, as they have every year, they conducted a, a flag-raising ceremony uh, on the banks of Victoria Harbor. And the uh, newly promoted deputy to the chief executive, the number two in the city, effectively, uh, celebrated what he said was the Communist Party's accomplishment, bringing Hong Kong back under Chinese rule, uh, ending what he argued was a, a real conspiracy to try to sow instability in Hong Kong. And he credited the national security law with this. Take a listen. While safeguarding national security, residents continue to enjoy freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly and demonstration, and others according to the law. Now that's kind of questionable, his argument there, because for 18 years you had an annual pro-democracy protest march in Hong Kong on July 1st. This is the first year that the group that organized it didn't even ask for it, basically. Uh, there were a couple of arrests as people did try to demonstrate. The police were out in force. Last year when they tried to do it, the riot police fired tear gas and, and, and water cannons. I haven't seen a protest in, in a year now that's been authorized by the police. That had been part of Hong Kong's fabric. Uh, and the Apple Daily newspaper that had been around for 26 years, that's been closed down. So some of these freedoms that the acting chief executive is talking about feel like they are very much slipping away. One accomplishment of Xi Jinping has been to restore stability in Hong Kong after a real year of, of protests and riots in 2019, uh, and also remove uh, a somewhat unpleasant form of dissent that had been celebrated in the city for decades. Linda. Yeah, indeed. Ivan, just uh, stand by for us, because I want to go to Will Ripley. Obviously, uh, a Will, uh, Taiwan is a major source of tension uh, for mainland China. Uh, and just explain for us what, chi what, what the reaction was in Taiwan today, because we heard from uh, the Chinese president uh, that had a message for Taiwan and certainly a, a warning to anyone willing to protect it. Yeah, certainly President Xi was not mincing words. He said he wants to crush the notion of Taiwanese independence, and he vowed for what he called the peaceful reunification of this island, a self-governing island for more than 70 years since the end of China's civil war in 1949, an island that now has a democratically elected leadership that does not accept. In fact, they reject China's political and territorial claims. But for the Chinese president, somehow you can peacefully unify someone that doesn't want to unify. And in fact, there was a tweet out from the presidential spokesperson uh, saying essentially that China's Communist Party wanted Taiwan for its 100th birthday. She said, pick another gift, grow up. And there was also a pretty uh, scathing response from the Taiwan Mainland Affairs Council, which we'll get to in a moment. But I first want you to listen to what President Xi said specifically about the island of Taiwan. Resolving the Taiwan question to realize China's complete unification is a historic mission and an unshakable commitment of the CCP. We should persist. No one should underestimate the result of will and ability of the Chinese to define the national sovereignty and the territorial integrity. So now, shortly after that, came this response from Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council. It said, the one-party dictatorship has clamped down on people's democracy, rights, and freedoms. It is even now using the name of national rejuvenation to become more dictatorial internally. Softer language from the Taiwanese president, Tsai Ing-wen, who was attending a military awards ceremony this afternoon. She said, it is more important now than ever for Taiwan to bolster its defense capabilities. That sentiment was echoed when I spoke with Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu. Uh, Taiwan spends about 1 15th uh, what Beijing does on defense. And they know that in a head-to-head -head military scenario, 
in, a, in, a, in an island that has literally hundreds of Chinese missiles pointed at it right now that could arrive in minutes, they know that that would not be a fair fight. However, Taiwan is wanting to send a message to Beijing that any sort of military action would come with grave consequences. And there has been military intimidation, even just last month. The largest ever recorded incursion into Taiwan's air defense identification zone by Chinese warplanes, including nuclear capable bombers and two kinds of fighter jets. And yet here in Taiwan, they also do believe that Beijing's priority would be for a peaceful reunification. But they have very, very different ideas of what coexisting would look like across the Taiwan Strait. And that continues to be emphasized with this 100th anniversary celebration in Beijing and a very different response here in Taipei, Linda. Yeah, it certainly is. I will Ripley and Ivan Watson, David Culver, good to have you all on this story for us. Thank you.